Major League Baseball's winter meetings always take four days, always end with the Rule 5 draft, and always conclude with a wrap-up of did the team get better or not. Well, one this year isn't very hard. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. The Pirates claimed a pitcher from the Dodgers in the Rule 5 yesterday in San Diego. A lefty named Jose Hernandez. They also lost catcher slash outfielder Blake Sable to the Reds in that draft. The Reds promptly moved him to the Giants. And then in the minor league phase of the Rule 5, which is usually the most boring, uneventful thing imaginable, (laughs) like in life, the Pirates lost an amazing 11 players from their system. Now, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. One is none of them are in your top 60, meaning in the system's top 60. On the other hand, 11 of them were taken. And that means that you're probably doing something right if that many guys outside your top 60 are available. But do you really want to be losing them? That's kind of a tough one there. And Ben Charrington, to his credit, when he was speaking with the reporters out there, uh, acknowledged that that might be something that the Pirates look at in the future and figure out what it was that happened there and what they can do to avoid it or whether or not it's even a priority to avoid it. As it was, they came away from Southern California with a couple of pitchers, veterans who were signed out of free agency, Harlan Garcia and Vince Velasquez. The latter is seen as a more of a swing guy who will be able to be in the bullpen and also compete for a rotation spot. Um, Neither of them is all that exciting, obviously. They're also not nothing. Uh, These are guys who are going to be in your major league pitching staff. So uh, I, I can't have it both ways and say on one hand, that part of what needed to happen this offseason was that they would go out and get arms like this because they're not expensive, and these weren't. They were right around the $2 million, $3 million range. And then say afterward, they're, you know, they're not going to move the needle. They don't. But there are still other players who can be acquired who would and should move the needle if this team is – giving more than just lip service to the idea of competing in 2023. These were among Charrington's closing remarks after the Rule 5 draft yesterday. feel good about the progress. Um, Nothing's changed as far as, you know, things we still want to do and still are working on and um, got a little more information on all of that uh, this week and um, not anticipating anything more happens tonight or anything necessarily, but we'll get out of here tomorrow and keep working at it and feel good that we're making progress. Yeah, he used the word progress a couple of times there, but well, I'll save that for after the break. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Here's the deal. You don't make progress in any environment when your best player has demanded to be traded out. And that's the headline, the only headline of these winter meetings for the Pirates. None of us can predict how that's going to turn out. Uh, We can hope for this or that. Uh, My own feeling is that Reynolds is a serious dude. And whatever it was that 
happened between him and his representatives at CAA that had them all on the same page to take this action and then from there to take it public. Yeah, you're into you're into some difficult territory there as far as rebuilding a bridge. And by that, I mean in either direction, because something the pirates did prompted Reynolds slash CAA to react the way they did. And then in turn, Reynolds and CAA asking for a trade and then going public with it. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a volatile mix, to put it gently. And it's not going to sort itself out in all likelihood. So there are no W's here. There's no W in anything that the Pirates could have done at the winter meetings, up to and including, in all likelihood, trading Reynolds. Because that's what this is going to come down to. This whole offseason is now defined by a single thing. And it sure isn't the number one pick in the draft. Because nobody, I mean nobody, nobody, nobody cares about this. If you have a pattern that is irreversible when it comes to good player comes up, good player disappears. Good player comes up, good player disappears. No one's going to care about your first rounder. For that matter, no one's going to care about Sir Mar Johnson or Henry Davis or Andy Rodriguez because of this pattern. How do you escape that if you're the Pirates? How do you get out of that situation? Really, really try to give that some thought. If you're Charrington, how do you escape this? For that, not just Charrington, Travis Williams, Bob Nutting, everybody. How do you get out of this Gordian knot that's here? Because if you move Reynolds and you move him for prospects, which is probably what you would do in a normal situation, you're crucified. Now you're just kicking the can. I'm not saying that as if I would have a different opinion. I wouldn't. If you don't move him and you just kind of say, hey, listen, you've got a contract and you've got to be here to play, which, by the way, has been their only public stance on this to date. You're really asking for a, a distraction and a half, not just in spring training, but especially into the regular season. Is even if Reynolds does great, even if he's a consummate pro and he's going out there and he's representing and he's helping you win, even that's an L for you. Even that's bad because now everybody's going, you're really going to trade this guy? Look how awesome he is. You are such terrible people. They have no W in this. They had one and they blew it. They blew it. Not necessarily that they needed to sign Reynolds, but they didn't need to have an approach that apparently was so awful that it would result in the player and the representation saying, whoa, these guys aren't even remotely serious. Let's get out of here. What a franchise. When we come back, J1Q... Cynthia, before I read what she has, I got to share. This is one of my favorite people. She doesn't even know this, okay? But I'm going to share it with her. Anyway, whenever we tweet out and put out on social media our various Daily Shot episodes, on my phone, there's an alert when somebody retweets something that we have off a certain company account. And I get the alert Every morning, even if it's like 4 a.m. or whatever, Cynthia retweeted Daily Shot of Pirates. Cynthia retweeted Daily Shot of Penguins. Cynthia, you are you are like the ultimate Daily Shot person. And I want you to know that I appreciate it. All Cynthia sent here for this particular entry. It wasn't a question. She was referring here to uh, the episode yesterday criticizing the members of management for jumping up and down upon winning the draft lottery. She says they were celebrating because what happened with that draft bought them even more time 
to kick the can or punt. Um, you know, maybe. I don't know. See, that's the problem. When you lose trust, and I don't even think this is just true of the stuff that we talk about on this show, how we feel about a certain baseball team. When you lose trust in any relationship, in any bond, no matter how one way or two way it is, you've really lost something. You've begun to lose that bond. Remember, Clint Hurdle used to refer to the bond, rebuild that bond between the city and its baseball team. Clint brought that back. He really did. Clint was a big, big part and should always get credit for it, of what happened in 2013 to 15. In particular, 2013. Because remember, he only took over in 2011. But it's been blown to bits since then, as we've seen. And even with the change in management, as long as you have the same individual at the top setting the same tone, you're going to get the same type of results. This public, our public, doesn't trust the pirates. I'm not exactly breaking revolutionary ground in stating that. And it becomes a challenge to even have a conversation about them because everything is rooted in, wait a second, are they even serious? And that's a really tough place to be for anybody who's following this team, no matter what your reasons are. If it's just because I enjoy watching ball in the summertime and I love PNC Park, I want to go over there, I want to see a winning team. If it's because of something that you remember uh, from your past or in the Pirates case, in all likelihood, from your very early childhood, it's still it's still maddening. It is. And take that you know, from the perspective of somebody who's just covering them. It's maddening to not be able to look at a simple, pure baseball scenario and say, well, yeah, but what if they're not even serious to just about anything that you'd bring up related to that? What if they don't even care like at all? Uh, what a franchise. I know I say it all the time, but is there anybody else anywhere doing a daily shot of like the Oakland A's or somebody else like that? There is there anyone doing that? I mean, if, if so, why? And who would listen to it? Why are you listening to this? Let's do it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm.